Hello friends, in my this video, I am going to dis discuss why do we take three RC sections in an RC phase shift oscillator, okay? So, you just check or go through my previous videos on RC phase shift oscillator or if you know, then that is fine, okay, no need to check. So, from the basic concept of RC phase shift oscillator, you know that there are three RC sections in the feedback network, okay? Just have a recap. See, this is basic diagram of RC phase shift network. This block may be made up of op amp or MOSFET or BJT, whatever. This block provides 180 degree phase shift. That is basically this block is also called inverting amplifier. And then this output is fed back in this feedback network from where uh, feedback voltage again it is provided as the input for this uh, basic amplifier block okay so see here capacitor resistor then again capacitor resistor then again capacitor resistor combination so this capacitor resistor network we are using three times back to back connection so the question is why why we cannot use only one rc section you know well that the you the aim to use or the idea of using this RC phase shift, uh, RC phase shift network is nothing but this inverting amplifier is providing 180 degree phase shift. So one more 180 degree phase shift should be provided by this feedback network to satisfy the Barkhausen criteria because you know from the Barkhausen criteria that is to sustain the oscillation the complete up, upon complete loop rotation the total phase shift must be must be multiple of 360 degrees. So, if this uh, basic amplifier block is providing 180 degree phase shift, so obviously rest 180 degree phase shift should be provided by this feedback network. And to achieve the rest 180 degree phase shift, we connect three RC sections back to back. Now, the question is, can't we get 180 degree phase shift by one RC section or two RC section while we are going to use three? That is the question, right? So, let us try to discuss in our this video. So, just take one RC section, if you observe here, see how the pattern is going, output is first given to the capacitor, then from the resistor, the, across the resistor, the voltage is taken and this is supplied to next RC section and it is going to, then again from this resistor, it is supplied to next RC section. So, basically output is given in the capacitor and feedback voltage is taken across the R we can say, right. So, basically, uh, for the feedback network, if you consider, in the capacitor, we are providing input and from the resistor, we are taking the output and providing in the next RC network. So, same circuit, we have taken capacitor, we are providing input and in the resistor, we are taking output, which is basically, if you consider in our original RC circuit, this V input is basically V output and the V output is basically V feedback, right? So, this is the network. Now, what you do, you just convert this capacitor into its corresponding AC equivalent model, that is capacitor becomes 1 by J omega C, you know, right, capacitor becomes 1 by J omega C, inductor becomes J omega L, but the resistor remains resistor only. Now, if you take the uh, whole, that is equivalent impedance of the circuit, you will get J equal to R plus 1 by J omega C, that is equal to R minus J by omega C, because 1 by J is nothing but minus J, right? Now, see, this is like from J is equal to X plus I Y. So, what we will do? We will take the magnitude and phase. So, mod of J equal to root over of R square plus 1 by omega square C square and phi equal to minus of tan inverse 1 by omega RC. Why the minus is coming uh, in the argument expression? Already I discussed in detail in my previous video. I will post the link in the description. If you have any doubt, you can check there, okay? So, basically, mod of J and phi are given by these two expressions, okay? Now, See, if you calculate I, I is what? I, that is current flowing through the whole circuit is nothing but input voltage divided by the equivalent impedance, right? So, I is equal to V in by Z, that is equal, that is nothing but V in by mod Z angle phi. So, V in at an angle 0, we can write in this way instead of writing V in. So, V in at an angle 0 by mod Z angle minus tan inverse 1 by omega RC. The expression whatever we have got here, that only we substituted here. So, by simplifying, we can get I equal to V in by mod Z angle tan inverse 1 by omega RC, okay? Now, I expression we are getting like this, I equal to V in by mod Z angle tan inverse 1 by omega RC. So, V output is nothing but the current flowing through the circuit into R, that is I into R from Ohm's law, right? So, substitute the expression of I and you will get V output equal to V input into R by mod Z angle tan inverse 1 by omega RC, right? Now, you substitute the uh, 
expression of morjet see morjet expression what we got morjet expression we got as root over of r square plus 1 by omega square c square so if you substitute you will get v output equal to v input into r by root over of r square plus 1 by omega square c square angle tan inverse 1 by omega rc fine so see v output expression we are getting this v output equal to v input into see here r by root over of r square plus 1 by omega square c square now this term you just simplify and you will get v output equal to v input into omega rc by root over of 1 plus omega square r square c square angle tan inverse 1 by omega rc so basically we can say output is uh, the phase that is the phase difference in between input and output is this factor that is tan inverse 1 by omega rc that is output is leading compared to input by this factor that is tan inverse 1 by omega rc so phi is equal to tan inverse 1 by omega rc this by this much factor output is leading compared to input right if we provide input across the rc series combination and if we take the output from the resistor then output will lead the uh, compared to input by this factor phi is equal to tan inverse 1 by omega rc now try to understand what is the range of the phi see omega rc all three are positive quantity right so it may range from zero to infinity only you can vary this omega rc range so if you put zero one by zero it will, it will become infinity tan inverse infinity is 90 degree and if you put uh, in omega rc as infinity it will become one by infinity as zero so tan inverse zero is zero that means as omega rc all are positive quantities so it may vary from 0 to infinity as a result phi will vary from what to what 0 to infinity only sorry 0 to 90 degree that is in between 90 degree and 0 the phi value will be there whatever value you uh, design for omega rc that means one rc phase shift network max can maximum provide 90 degree phase shift okay so by one rc phase shift network it is not at all possible to achieve 180 degree phase shift so the one possibility is omitted from our uh, options we have started with three options right that is one is conventional three rc sections connected back to back in the rc phase shift network one may be two rc uh, connections in the rc phase shift network another one is by single rc phase rc network can we achieve 180 degree phase shift and the answer is no because phi maximum is 90 degree for the rc phase shift network so what there is no possibility to get 180 degree phase shift by one single rc phase shift network so now our attempt is for two rc phase shift network so now question is whether by applying two rc connections back to back can we achieve 180 degree phase shift the answer will be no just now we will understand so if we want two rc if we want to achieve uh, the 180 degree phase shift by two rc connections and you as you know both can provide maximum 90 degree phase shift so we can say that each rc section should provide at least 90 degree phase shift to get overall 180 degree phase shift by two rc sections of rc phase shift network right so phi should be 90 degree okay so tan inverse 1 by omega rc phi expression just put tan inverse 1 by omega rc should be 90 degree that means omega 1 by omega rc is nothing but it should be infinity because tan 90 degree is infinity right so tan inverse 1 by omega rc equal to 90 degree 1 by omega rc equal to infinity now how can we make such a design by which you can achieve this uh, this combination that is 1 by omega rc equal to infinity either this, this indicates omega r c equal to 0, right? That means either omega equal to 0 or r equal to 0 or c equal to 0. Okay, whatever possibility you take within these three possibilities, it must satisfy, then only omega r c will become 0, right? Now, I can understand it very clearly. This is the expression for the output voltage over v output equal to v input into omega r c by root over of 1 plus omega square r square c square angle tan inverse 1 by omega r c, right? Forget about this angle or phase part. Just consider the magnitude part suppose any of these three condition is applicable for your circuit either omega equal to 0 or r equal to 0 or c equal to 0 you just put in this expression and see what you are getting as soon as you put either omega equal to 0 or r equal to 0 c equal to 0 this magnitude part will become 0 that means v output will become 0 that means you basically practically you can never achieve 90 degree also by a single rc uh, uh, rc series connection why because 
at the extreme case that is when phi is equal to 90 degree among these three at least one should be equal to zero and as soon as the either omega or r or c becomes zero you just put omega or r or c equal to zero in this expression you will get output voltage as zero that means as soon as phi equal to 90 degree the output provided by the rc connection if you take the output across the resistor it will become zero so there is no question of getting 90 degree phase shift your output itself is coming as zero how can you measure phase shift in that right so basically that's what the conclusion is you cannot achieve you cannot achieve 90 degree phase shift also by a single rc network so that what is the conclusion the conclusion is by a single rc phase shift network you can get phase shift in the output if you take output across the resistor you can get phase shift which is whose range is in between 0 and 90 degree it cannot be 90 degree its range will between 0 and 90 degree okay so now obviously uh, symmetric configuration will take so what we design we design the circuit in such a way that the first rc network provides 180 degree sorry 60 degree then again 60 degree by another rc circuit then again 60 degree by another rc circuit so 60 plus 60 plus 60 will become 180 degree okay so in this way we take uh, the uh, three rc connections for rc phase shift network to achieve 180 degree phase shift in the feedback network okay so you can, it is possible that you divide 180 degree by 4 into four parts so for 45 degree phase shift means 180 degree right so you can add four rc connections back to back and you design your circuit in such a way that each will provide 45 degree phase shift then also you can achieve 180 degree phase shift by the rc phase shift network that is also possible but why you will add more and more number of resistors and capacitors means you know right that resistor has its own loss power loss is there the circuit will become heated up the frequency will become temperature dependent because resistor will become temperature de dependent so always we try to ignore apply more number of resistors in a circuit right modern circuits are not at all we are using resistors instead we are applying uh, nowadays we are applying crystal oscillators which is less temperature dependent which uh, overcomes the disadvantage of rc and lc network so that is different issue so basically this is the idea to use three rc network back to back to get 180 degree phase shift you cannot get 180 degree phase shift by two or one rc network i hope the concept is clear to you so this is all for my this video for more videos related electronics and communication engineering please subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon and if this video helps you to boost your concept in analog electronic circuit please like share and comment thank you for watching